This week from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, NASA launched a spacecraft on a mission straight out of a Hollywood movie. The Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART for short, began a 10-month mission to crash itself into an asteroid named Dimorphos. What does it actually take to deflect an asteroid? Well, uh, you need uh, a propulsion system, you've got to get really up close to it, and you need a fantastic guidance and navigation system. Airbus's Matthew Studdard explaining that even flying at around 24,000 kilometers per hour, DART's mission isn't to destroy the asteroid on impact, but rather just to give it enough of a nudge to reroute it away from Earth. DART will fly nearly 11 million kilometers for the test as part of a relatively low-cost $330 million project. NASA plans for impact in September of next year. No worries either way as Dimorphos poses no real threat to Earth. In other news from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, two future space tourists and their cosmonaut flight mates prepared for their upcoming trip to the International Space Station. Japanese entrepreneur Yusaka Maizawa and his assistant Yozo Hirano checked their spacesuits and inspected the Soyuz 20 spaceship that will take them to the ISS. Russian state news says this will be the first time in 12 years that space tourists will fly aboard a Soyuz. Maizawa says he was nearly brought to tears by the impressive operation and the crew is set to launch on the 8th of December. This all comes just a week after Russia fired a missile at one of its own satellites, creating thousands of pieces of space junk that the United States and NATO called reckless as the debris potentially endangers the space projects of all countries. Meanwhile, Starlink, the global broadband service subsidiary of SpaceX, apologized to customers who complained about a slower-than-expected rollout. Starlink promised customers who paid $100 deposits that they'd have a beta version of the service by mid to late 2021, but the company said in an email that silicon chip shortages would push back delivery until next year. Business Insider reports the company has more than 1,600 satellites in orbit. Astronomers complain those satellites block views of anything beyond them in space. Finally, the longest partial lunar eclipse in centuries happened this week as previously reported in this segment. Seen here, the lunar eclipse, also called a blood moon, lasted 3 hours, 28 minutes, and 23 seconds. The Earth's shadow covered 98% of the moon, and NASA says it was the longest such event since February of 1440. Arash Arabasadi, VOA News.